This is Neil Schneider, MTBS TV at CES 2010. I'm joined by Steve Venuti, president of HDMI Licensing. Welcome, Steve. Thank you very much for having me. So you're enjoying CES so far, 3D very important this year. Why don't we talk a little bit about HDMI? I mean, not many people really are fully familiar with, as to how important HDMI is to their day-to-day -day use in television. So why don't we talk a little bit about your, your company, what you guys do? So HDMI is the standards box that essentially defined this all-in-one cable that allows uncompressed audio and video and now data to go from DVD player set-top box to AV receiver to television. So what's new about it is it's one cable and it's all digital and it's uncompressed so it's the highest quality possible. Now, there's all kinds of televisions on the market. I mean, is, is this cable the same right through? I mean, does your specification change? Why is HDMI so important? So it is a specification, so it really defines the common interface uh, that, that, that is going to define the way devices talk to each other. So it really is the way of connecting any HD component. And 99% of the TVs now have HDMI on them, so it's become the, the standard way of delivering HD data. Okay, excellent. Now, what about 3D? I mean, obviously, there's, there's a lot of pressure now for the industry to bring stereoscopic 3D content from the cinema to the home. How does HDMI fit into this? So we just announced our latest um, specification, which is 1.4, and that was announced in June. And in June, we defined the way 3D signaling and formats will be exchanged from source device to the display device. So that was a major step in bringing, I think, 3D to the home. 3D has been around for ages. There's been a lot of different ways of delivering 3D. Since we are the way of, we are the platform and the pipeline for delivering this data, we've defined the consistent way that you're going to implement this so that when you get a device A and hook it up to TV B, they're going to, you're going to get 3D picture. Okay, so so you've you've in your 1.4 specification, what I'm gathering is you have a means of transmitting 3D content, uh, like specifically designed for 3D content. Am I correct that so far? Is, and that is right. And not only do we have a means, but we've also said if you do it over HDMI, you must at least do it this way. You can do it other ways because there are many ways to do it, but you must at least do it this way so that every device will always get a 3D picture. Now, there's different formats in the market. I mean, if we've been following the news, Real-D has their, their format being licensed by different manufacturers like Samsung, Sony, JVC as examples. There are other you know, codecs and algorithms and formats in the market as well. Uh, does HDMI interact with these formats equally well? I mean, how does HDMI fit in the picture with multiple formats? So we're not in the business of defining which format's going to win. All these formats are out there. We support all the formats that are out there. Um, and so what, we, what we've done is say, if you implement it, you must implement certain formats, very specific ones. That's to make sure that your interoperability happens. But you have the option to also implement all these other formats based on your own specific needs and what you want to deliver. So we've kind of designed it so that you can implement any format you want. And, and if you do, it's, just, it's implemented consistently because it's in the specification. But you must do certain common ones so everybody talks a common language. Now, our members are very experienced 3D gamers, 3D users. Can you elaborate a little bit on, on which formats are currently supported or officially supported by HDMI? So there is a format supported. It's a frame packing format specifically designed for the gaming community. Um, and so we have defined a, a, a format to deliver 3D gaming over HDMI that every device that says, I support 3D with HDMI, will share in common, and games can be delivered uh, in a, in a, in a, uh, you know, a kind of uncompressed way um, that will deliver the highest, highest resolution and highest uh, experience possible. Now, when we're talking about gaming, are we talking about PC? Are we talking about console? Can, can you elaborate a little bit more? It could be both. It is both. I mean, it is both because games do come from both. What is the gaming spec? Is there like a certain resolution? Like how, how would you define it? So there's so frame packing is the is the format, and that's basically the way you're gonna you're gonna pack the frames so that you get the left right and you get the uh, you get the experience there. There are multiple kinds of um, flavors of that, which essentially allows you to do it based on whether it's a PC or whether it's a game console or whether it's in Europe or whether it's in the U.S. But frame packing um, based on 720p is is really what what we're what 
I'm oh. saying is the mandated ga game format. Okay, 720p. Does that is that like play state? Like is that current game standard? Current game standard. And current game standard. And it, can it be up? Like I know, like with film, I mean, 1080p is the, is like the, the the number of choice. Does HDMI 1.4 support the higher resolutions for gaming as well? Absolutely, 1080p too. 1080 dual 1080p, left, right, uncompressed streams. Uh, HDMI 1.4 supports. Okay. One of the big challenges right now, especially with LCD shutter glasses, is synchronization on the PC market. And uh, it's going through DV, either dual link DVI or DVI or in some cases VGA cables. Does HDMI 1.4 offer synchronization by default, or you know, does HDMI have anything to do with synchronization with shutter glasses? So right now it does not, but we're actually talking about putting flags into the metadata, essentially, that can understand what you need, synchronize with all devices. We synchronize with all devices, but we always thought of device as a DVD or a set-top box or a game console or a PC with a TV. Now we've got to think beyond that and think about what the other paraphernalia you'll need to gain a 3D experience. Polarized glasses, you know, shutters, what do you need? And so we're, we're actually looking at that. It doesn't do it currently, but uh, we're looking at that. Okay. Now, 1.3, I take it, is the current standard of choice with uh, HDTVs on the market. And the press I've read so far suggests there's a number of TVs coming to market based on 1.3 HDMI versus the up-and-coming 1.4. Will their compatibility at all be impacted based on being 1.3 versus 1.4? So we've always, the, 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 the HDMI consortium, they have a couple of golden rules, and one is you don't break backwards compatibility. So all devices, 1.3, 1.4, 1.2, 1.1, it doesn't even really matter. They'll all work with each other. Now, they only work to the level of shared commonality, that is shared features. You're not going to get 3D because you buy a 1.4 3D television, but you you know you have a standard DVD player. You're not going to get that. But whatever those devices share in common, they'll work. And it, the one, one more question for you, I realize I'm taking your time. Uh, 1.4, is it a hardware difference or is it a software difference? Well, that's an academic, rhetorical, theoretical question. Uh, the answer is it depends. Uh, for example, talk about gaming, for example. To, to, to access 3D, the PS3 is going to do a firmware upgrade to be able to pass 3D data and be, become essentially a 1.4 device. That essentially tells you that there are certain kinds of features that can be upgraded via firmware, and, uh, and, that can, and that can make an old device basically compliant with the new specification. Not all, not all uh, you know, the Ethernet channel, for example, really takes a new PHY, a new chip, to be able to, to implement that. So it really depends. Uh, there are some features that can be implemented via firmware upgrades. Others are going to require new hardware. So uh, in the case of, let's say, PlayStation, if they do a firmware upgrade to 1.4, is it a, because when I think of 1.4, I think of higher bandwidth, I think of higher performance. In your opinion, is it a detection of 1.3 versus 1.4, or do you think it's actually a performance difference? Well, then you, you, you can't increase the bandwidth of the chip, right? You can't just do a firmware upgrade and take a chip from, you know, 5 gigabits per second to 10 gigabits per second. That's not going to happen. But for example, for 3D, you can pass 3D data. It, it doesn't have to be 1080p left to right. It can also be within the current the current resolution of the PS3 and the, and, the, and the data capacity of the PS3. The firmware upgrade then lets the chip know how to package that data, how to package the 3D data, send it over the link to be unpacked over here, and, and, and translated to left to right. So it's not going to increase the bandwidth. It can't physically do anything to increase the bandwidth, but it certainly can tell the chip uh, from a software point of view, what is the signaling you need to do? What is the detection, the uh, you know, the, the capability discovery you need to do to be able to perform 3D functionality? So it can do that. Well, it, it's an ex exciting time for 3D for HDMI. I'm sure. I'm sure. Thank you for for joining us on on MTBS TV, and uh, good luck at CES. It sounds it sounds like it's this is your show. Well, you know, we like to do our part. Thank you very much for having us. Excellent. This is Neil Schneider, CES 2010, MTBS TV. We'll be back.